In this video, let's address what is a data subdomain. My name is George Firikan, and I'm a data governance and data management practitioner. If you're interested in learning more about data governance and data management, please subscribe to my channel and check out my online courses at lightsondata.com. All right, now let's go into our topic of data subdomains. Woo! Okay, that was a bit loud. But I'm excited to tell you more about data subdomains. In the previous video, we covered data domains, but yes, there's also the concept of data subdomains. Typically, each data domain will have anywhere between three to 10 data subdomains. What is a data subdomain? It's simply a way to divide that data domain even further into other categories. There are some considerations though. The subdomain is unique, so you can have the same subdomain belonging to multiple domains, which can actually be harder than it seems. There's also a one-to-one -one relationship between the data domain and data subdomain. And lastly, the data subdomain inherits the characteristics of its parent data domain. As I mentioned, you will usually find three to 10 sub data domains for each data domain. It's not a characteristic per se, but it's something that we encounter often in data governance implementations. Now, let me provide you with some data subdomain examples to some of the data domains mentioned in the video on what is a data domain. Let's start by looking at three data domains here, customer, vendor, and location. And I will outline some potential subdomains for each one of them. Customer. Well, some obvious data subdomains would be individual and corporation. These are the most common ones that we're encountering if you're a company that caters to both type of customers, especially if you are both a B2B or B2C company. Then we can have a data subdomain such as government, another one, charity or charitable foundation, because their characteristics are distinct enough from a corporation that it merits to break them down into their own data subdomain. Same with group, which could be a group of corporations or a mix of individuals and corporations, or I guess any of the above. Let me know in the comments below if you have any of these options for the customer domain, or if you have a different one that's not on this list. Vendor. The first data subdomain that I'd like to mention is the vendor specification. So this could include any data related to scope of work, special instructions, conditions, technical specifications, directives, exclusivity status, and so on. Pricing could be another one. It could include those terms, the payment schedule, the price or expense of a feature, and so on. And lastly, we could also have the service level agreement, which can refer to the SLA itself, as well as the data associated with it, such as you know any dates we might have in there, options considered and options dismissed, environmental factors, limitations, operating conditions, service or product availability, safety aspects, and so forth and so on. I'm only scratching the surface with what different data sets could go under this subdomain. Lastly, let's take a look at location. Location is a data domain that a lot of larger corporations cover. As we can see, there are different data subdomains that we can split location into as well. I think the options are self-explanatory, so I won't go into a lot of detail. One could choose to use all of them or mix and match depending on your organization. If you're not a large organization with multiple locations or buildings, you might just have the location domain on its own or really split it into those data subdomains such as geographical area and office. And that is if you're storing or using that location data. By the way, the geographical area might also be tied to a virtual area, or you can choose to have that as its own subdomain. I provide a lot more examples in my practical data governance course, but I hope this will give you a good idea on what a data subdomain is from a data governance point of view. Don't forget to like the video if you've enjoyed it, and please click the subscribe and bell buttons as it would really help me out. Thank you and see you in the next video.